Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of DSLRtips.com. Photos taken at night can produce some absolutely spectacular results. In fact, many cities present their best views of all after dark. Night photography can also be very forgiving on bad weather, so if rain's prevented you from getting the shots of a city like you want during a day, it's well worth trying again after sunset. However, night photography can prove a bit of a challenge when your camera is set to automatic. Often the results are very disappointing, but by learning a few very simple tricks, you can get some great looking results. And in this workshop, I'll show you everything you need to know. This photo of Christmas decorations outside of a house at night time was taken using a camera's automatic settings and the result is just way too dark. Set to automatic, most DSLRs will either get confused by this kind of subject matter or simply try and avoid camera shake. Either way, they'll generally select a relatively quick exposure and produce a dark picture like you see here. So while admittedly there is no camera shake here, the exposure just wasn't anywhere near long enough to successfully record the lights. There's just two tricks behind successful night photography. First is making sure enough light gets into your camera for a decent looking exposure. And second is ensuring that your camera is kept steady during that exposure to avoid any shake. The first part is easy. First of all, you'll want to maximize the amount of light entering your camera through the lens, and that involves opening the lens iris to its maximum diameter. After that, it's a case of simply experimenting with different shutter speeds until you get the result that you're looking for. Now, it's possible to independently control the shutter speed and the aperture with any DSLR using their manual mode. Here's how it works in practice. To put your DSLR into manual mode, simply turn the main command dial to the letter M. This will let you independently adjust the aperture and the shutter speed. If your DSLR has only one control wheel, either at the front of the camera or the back, then this will normally be used to adjust the shutter speed. To adjust the aperture, you'd normally hold a button down while turning the same dial. Check your manual for details. If your DSLR has two dials, then one will normally be devoted to the shutter and the other to the aperture. The actual aperture and shutter values will normally be shown on the screen on the back of the camera or through the optical viewfinder. If your DSLR has a screen on the top, then those values will be shown there. On this particular model, the shutter speed is indicated here in the top left corner of the screen as a fraction, and next to it, the aperture as an F number. So to adjust the shutter speed, simply turn that control wheel. And to adjust the aperture, hold down the exposure compensation button while turning the same dial. So the first step is to open your lens aperture to let in as much light as possible. To do this, select the smallest F number for your lens, which for this particular model is F3.5. Next, adjust the shutter speed, and this involves some experimentation. For night skylines, a good starting point is a shutter speed of around one second, and most cameras indicate seconds using double quotes. So here we've selected a shutter speed of one second. If this produces a picture that's too bright, try a quicker shutter speed of say half a second or maybe a quarter of a second. And if it's too dark, try a longer shutter speed of say two seconds or maybe four seconds or perhaps more still. And now to that second trick that I mentioned earlier. The kind of exposures that you need for night photography are just way too long for you to successfully hand hold. You'll end up with terrible camera shape ruining your photo in most situations. And this also applies whether your camera has built-in anti-shake or you're using a lens with optical stabilisation. Those might help a great deal in normal situations, but when it comes to night photography and very long exposures, they're not going to be effective. So you're simply going to have to find somewhere very steady to place your camera. A tripod is ideal. They'll hold your camera steady and also allow you to easily adjust the angle for the exact composition that you're after. If you prefer to travel light, a Gorillapod is a great alternative to a tripod. But if you have neither of these at your disposal, then look around for a ledge or a post and balance your camera on that. They can actually prove very effective. Now all of these will keep your camera steady, but once you press the button with your finger, you'll end up wobbling it again and causing camera shake. So to avoid that, use the self timer to take the photo or use an optional cable release accessory. Just one more quick note about using a tripod or a gorilla pod or leaving your camera on a post. Always switch any stabilisation or anti-shake facilities off, because if the camera is steady, these systems can sometimes actually introduce camera shake when they're trying to counteract something that isn't actually there. 
So here's that first photo again of Christmas lights taken using a camera's automatic mode. And as before, the relatively quick exposure has resulted in an image that's way too dark. Now here's a photo taken moments later in manual mode with a longer exposure and the difference is quite dramatic. The first photo was taken with a shutter speed of an eighth of a second, but for this second shot we made sure the aperture was wide open and increased the exposure to five seconds, and we also used a tripod to keep the image steady. The same technique can be used to capture spectacular images of city skylines. This shot of Tokyo after dark was taken with a 15 second exposure from inside a hotel room with the lights turned off to avoid internal reflections on the window. The long exposure has allowed the car headlights on the streets below to leave really nice looking trails. Reflections on hotel windows may not look good but when they're on water between you and the view you can get some great looking results such as this one of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. This was actually quite bright but still required a one second exposure. If it's not yet completely dark, longer exposures can actually give the impression of dusk or dawn. This photo of the Las Vegas skyline was taken after sunset when the sky actually appeared reasonably dark to the eye, but a half second exposure has given the sky a brighter appearance while still capturing the city lights. Once you've completed your night photography, always remember to switch your camera back from manual to its fully automatic or the program mode indicated by the letter P. Successful night photography is possible with any DSLR and once again it just involves two tricks. First, making sure you get enough light into your camera and secondly, making sure your camera is steady throughout that long exposure. For a step-by-step -step guide that accompanies this video along with many more tips and techniques, head on over to www.dslrtips.com.